Hi there, we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 10, verse 1 to 12. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. I will bet you a lot of money that Mark chapter 10 verse 1 to 12 is one of the least preached on passages in the whole Bible. I I am only aware of one message that I ever heard of um, that was about divorce. And it was at a wedding, and it was the worst wedding sermon I ever heard, because he preaches about divorce at a wedding. It was all about, if you, the divorce rate is so high, and so be married, but good luck to you, basically. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. But I, I, unless somebody's kind of working through Mark, and they get to it and quickly stumble over it, I, I've never heard anyone choose to grab that passage and use it. Why? Because on the one hand, it, it is very controversial, especially amongst divorced people, and it is very difficult. It is a painful thing. If this is the truth, it's very difficult. And the other thing is that it is so straightforward. So straightforward. What, what is very interesting, and I'll let you wrestle with this on your own, is that Jesus gives the pattern for marriage that I find in Genesis, which deals with another controversial topic. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, as the two will become one flesh. So they're no no longer two, but one. What God has joined together, let man not separate. But then he goes on to, to say that if you get divorced and you get married again, you're committing adultery. I have friends who are divorced, and some of them got married again, and some of them are going to get married again. And it is the hardest passage because I cannot justify this passage to what they're doing. So either I have to find a way of working around this passage or I have to find a way that is very difficult. But it is in the Bible and it is words of Jesus. And I think we need to deal with them honestly. And it seems pretty straightforward. So it's really tough. It is one of the passages that I wrestle with when there are situations linked to it. I don't. If you just give me this as a passage, it's easy to have a theology on it because it feels so pretty straightforward. Bring it into a situation and it becomes a lot harder. And I don't know that I have easy answers for people that have been in that situation. And as much as it takes two to tango, I know relationships where it feels like it has been way more the one person's fault than the other person. And so, what is it for that person? Like, do they need to be single for the rest of their life? That is a hard call. And I guess, if you're in that situation, you you take this passage and, and you take it to God, and you need to wrestle with it, and you need to be okay. <laughs> If you move on from it and that's that's what I can say like it would be easier to just skip and not do this particular one because I know somebody's gonna read this and be hurt but if you hurt be hurt by what Jesus said because I'm not making an opinion on it it just it really just seems so straightforward so maybe I am making an opinion on it um, that's my opinion but it is hard and it is one I wrestle with but I feel we need to Jesus never got married And so Jesus lived for 33 years, he never had sex, and he never got married. 
And so as exciting and as great as having sex and getting married are, maybe we've put too much emphasis on them. Maybe it is possible to live a full life without them in certain circumstances. Some people choose to. Most people do not choose to. Jesus demonstrated that it was possible. And sometimes, like divorce, is always the result somewhere along the line of, of sin. Not necessarily both people have sinned. Maybe it's baggage from parents, whatever. I'm not saying it's like those two people sinned and that's where the divorce happened. Somewhere along the line, sin happened that ultimately led to that divorce. And so sin has consequences. God forgives sin, but he doesn't always remove the consequences. And so if you sleep with someone out of wedlock, that is sin, you might have a baby. Like God doesn't remove the baby as a consequence of sin. That doesn't mean that that baby is sin. Fortunately, that is counted by that Romans 8 passage. God is able to bring good out of all bad, out of all situations, out of all good and bad situations. God is able to work everything for good for those who love Him. And so our junk and our mess, when we put it in Jesus' hands, it can still become a beautiful thing. But we do need to realize that sin has consequences. And again, another message that the church just doesn't seem to preach. We, we, we big on grace and we big on love and we big on second uh, chances and all that kind of thing. But sin has consequences. People get hurt. Some, sometimes families get hurt. Situations get messed up. Sometimes sin goes through generations. And, and that should motivate us to be encouraged to, to sin less, to deal with our sin, to not celebrate it, to not just let it get out of control. But we have to take it seriously. And so you are left with this passage, which is tricky, which is difficult, but it really does seem self-explanatory. And so if you are wrestling with that, then just know that God is full of grace and love and turning broken stuff into good. But I feel we need to take this a lot more seriously than we do.